Chris here and welcome to my channel and welcome to this week's reading vlog. So it is week three of July already, mind blowing. Next week is the final book support groups. The one thing I can tell you about this week is that none of the books from my final book support group are going to be ones I try to read this week. Otherwise, books I will be focusing on, A Spoonful of Time, which is an ebook I'm reading. It's a middle grade and it follows a girl named Maya who is living with her mom and her grandmother shows up. She's never really met her gram and obviously the relationship between her gram and her mom is strained, but her grandmother is starting to develop, I believe, dementia. And so she ends up staying with them. Although that happens before the book, we learn about that during the book. So she's getting to know her grandmother and she's making um, some sort of culturally significant food. I wish I could remember off the top of my head what culture it is or the name of the food. Anywho, um, she's cooking with her grandmother and her grandmother grabs her arm and they end up traveling through time and she finds out that her family, some of them anyways, have the ability to use food to kind of travel through time and see just memories of their past. And I'm enjoying this so far. It is very interesting. I'm enjoying learning about the time travel and how it works. And I'm enjoying learning about Maya's family and getting to see her discover that as well. I started Me and Mr. P. I'm only about 50 pages in, but this follows a boy named Arthur who's struggling in his family because his younger brother Liam is autistic and everything kind of revolves around Liam and keeping him happy. And Arthur is like fed up and he's like, that's it, I'm running away. And while he's out, he meets a polar bear who ends up coming home with him. I don't really know much more. We're gonna see how this one goes. And then I'm reading As Brave As You Are. I'm just under 100 pages and this follows Jeannie who is spending the summer at his grandparents and is getting to learn some things about his grandpa that he never knew. So that's what I'm in the midst of. Um, this one wasn't holding my attention. So I kind of set it down because last week was really stressful. Um, if you want the details for that, it is basically cat related um, and it is in last week's vlog. So go check that out for all the details. I don't really want to rehash it but um, it wasn't really holding my attention. So I kind of moved on to other stuff. So we'll see what else I get up to. Like I said, the only thing that would be completely off limits is my final book support group TBR because I'll be reading that next week. As for what else I need to get up to this week, um, January's book haul is uploading. I've edited part of last week's vlog. So obviously I want to finish that so that it can go up this week. I'd like to edit February's book haul, maybe even film another one or two of them maybe. And I have to film my announcement video for the winner of the Queer Book Club choice for August, which let me tell you right now, it's pretty heated. They're, they're, they're neck and neck. So it's going to be very interesting to see who wins. I have to film my final book support group TBR so I can get that out on my channel. And I was thinking of maybe doing some kind of like mid-year check-in to give you some stats about, you know, what I have read so far in the first six months of the year. Like how many five stars I've read, um, maybe a couple books I want to highlight for whatever reason, um, let you know how I'm doing on like series. And yeah, we'll, we'll see how it goes. I may or may not get to that one. That's going to depend on whether I have spoons and we're in the middle of the longest heat wave ever, it feels like. So that will also factor into things. I also hope in my videos that like the fan and the air conditioner haven't been too bad. The fan isn't on right now, but I know I've had them on and I hope it's not too awful annoying, but if I don't have them on, I'm going to melt. <laughs> it's been that hot. So hopefully you all understand that like if I could have them off and not just turn into a com complete like sweaty mass while I was filming. I, I would, but I figure most of you are probably like, it's no big deal. It's kind of expected. It's hot in the summer. I'd rather have you cool than like sweating your butt off just so that you can film. So, um, I, I will try to check in at some point this week. Um, I'm not going to make any promises cause I'm, my head is all over the place and it's been very, very chaotic, but that is currently the plan. Fingers crossed for good reading week. Maybe I will be able to finish most of my phase out your TBR TBR, but I know I can't finish it completely because there's at least one book that is on my final book support group TBR. 
so I can't read that till next week but maybe I can get through some of the ones that aren't on my funnel book support group TBR I don't know we'll see but I'm, I'm now rambling and that's going to make this vlog even harder to edit whenever I get to it so I'm gonna go now get ready for bed see if I can't read something cozy up with the cats because it's been very hard to do that because they won't come in my room when the door is shut and yeah I mean let's see if I can show you there she is she waiting for me so I'm gonna go curl up with her and I'll see y'all later and let you know what I'm uh getting up to and what I've read this week so there's also a chance maybe she'll check in with me I'll see you soon. I'm finally checking in. It has been an incredibly long week. I did a lot of filming. I filmed my final book support group TBR. I filmed three book hauls and I filmed the announcement video for the winner of the August book club pick. So I have been a filming machine, but filming those meant that I didn't check in here because I only had so much spoons for being on camera. So I apologize for that, but I have had a pretty decent reading week. So let me run you through what I read. First, I finished A Spoonful of Time, and I'm giving this three and a half stars. This follows Maya, whose grandmother has come to live with her and her mom like a year ago, I think. And her grandmother is suffering from what seems to be dementia. And prior to that, she didn't really know her grandmother. And she's definitely had to take on a lot of the taking care of her gram because her mom works a lot. She ends up making food with her grandmother one night and her grandmother grabs her arm and they end up traveling back in time to a moment where she's watching her dead grandfather hold a young child, which obviously has to be her mom, and learns that their family has the ability to kind of travel through time. And we see her start to learn about some of her family's heritage. So the reason this gets three and a half is that I really liked the family vibes. I liked the idea of being able to go back and replay certain moments in your life that are connected specifically to food because that is integral to the ability to travel however there were some twists at the end that i really did not enjoy and that brought my rating down significantly this was feeling like a higher four star until those twists and i did not like the twists at all i don't know that i would recommend the book because it is really all going to depend on whether you like the twists or not I can't say I feel like I wasted my time because again three and a half it wasn't awful but again they weren't my favorite and like it's really hard to explain without explaining the twist so just keep that in mind that if you're going to pick this up there are a lot of really interesting things like I said with the time travel and it being time to food they have recipes for the food that is mentioned and these are very important to Maya's family and the culture of their family so I thought that was really interesting as well so like I said, it's, it's really all going to depend on whether the twist works for you or not, and it didn't work for me. Then I finished As Brave As You Are, and I gave it 3.25 stars. So this follows a young kid named Jeannie who is going to be spending the summer with his grandparents. He hasn't really spent much time with them, and we kind of follow his journey as he gets to know his grandparents. His grandpa is pretty eccentric and deals with some things he is going through while he's there. I thought this was fine. It wasn't my favorite. I thought it was slow at parts. Like I think the book could have moved faster and the kind of meat of the plot happened way far into the book. So like it kind of dragged in the beginning. And then on top of that, I felt like there were a lot of loose threads that didn't really get addressed, but they were kind of thrown in there. So I thought this was a perfectly fine 
book, but again, not one of my favorites and I can't see it being one that I reread. Then I read Murder on the House and I gave this four stars. This is, I think, the third book in the Haunted Home Renovation Mystery Series and we're following Mel who renovates these older homes and has the ability to see and communicate with ghosts, which definitely is something you're going to find in older houses. She built up a bit of a reputation for that. So the owners specifically get a hold of her for this house because they know it's haunted. And to get the job, she has to be willing to spend an entire night in the house. And during this very creepy sleepover that she's having at the house, somebody else joins the ghostly party when a body turns up and somebody is murdered. So Mel ends up once again looking into things. I quite enjoyed the mystery on this one. I thought it was very intriguing seeing Mel try to puzzle through what was going on with the ghosts in the house and what they knew and didn't know and how that factored into the death, if at all. And so I thought that was really intriguing. I liked some of the personal drama that happened for Mel in this one as well. I think this is a really fun, cozy mystery series. I like the ghostly aspect and it's definitely one I'm going to continue. Then I read The Rom-Commers and I gave this two and a half stars. So this wasn't my favorite. This follows Emma, who's been taking care of her dad after an accident and wants to be a writer. And a friend calls her up and tells her that one of her favorite screenplay writers, Charlie Yates, needs help. He is writing a romance screenplay and her friend thinks she's the perfect person to help him rewrite it because it's not going really well. So she drafts in her little sister to take care of her dad, flies off to LA, and soon finds out that Charlie didn't agree to any of this and eventually gets convinced to stay and help out with this screenplay, despite knowing that it's not what she originally thought it was and that Charlie really isn't interested in any of this. So we kind of see their dynamics play out while they work to rewrite this screenplay that Charlie isn't really taking seriously, doesn't really care about, and he certainly doesn't want any help from Emma. And there were several things I didn't like. I personally did not like Charlie at all. I felt there was a lot of miscommunication in this book that could have just been cleared up by them having a proper conversation, which really annoyed me. I didn't like that there were times when Emma broke the fourth wall to talk specifically to us, the reader. That was jarring and took me out of the book. There was a situation towards the end of the book that felt like it kind of came out of nowhere and was resolved way too quickly, which again, brought down my enjoyment of the book. So this did not have a lot going for it. Like I said, I wasn't really into Emma breaking the fourth wall and talking to us. I was not invested in Emma and Charlie's relationship because I didn't like Charlie. I did not like that there was a lot of miscommunication or choosing not to communicate, which I found really annoying. And then I really didn't like the drama that was added in at the end that felt like it was forced in there and resolved way too quickly. So this really, really wasn't a book for me. Though I will say on the bland to spicy scale, for those who are wondering, it is on the bland side versus the spicy side. That part didn't bother me at all. It had no more than I was comfortable with reading. So if it sounds interesting and you want to read it, I can't stop you. But I can at least tell you if you're somebody who wants spicier romances, you're not going to find it here. And if you prefer blander romances, this is going to be much more your speed. Then I read Butterfly on the Wind and I gave this four stars. So this follows a young girl named Aurora who is getting ready to do a talent show. She's practicing in her back garden and her hands are trembling. She is deaf so she's using sign language and she's a little nervous and she spots a butterfly and it inspires her to send a butterfly out into the world and we see this butterfly go out and meet other people who are also part of the deaf community, inspiring them to add their own butterflies. This was really, really cute. I love that it focused on deaf culture and bringing some more awareness to that. I thought that the art was just gorgeous. Like it was super pretty. And I think it really added to that. I love that there is a picture book that is representing the deaf community and bringing more awareness of that to kids so that they can learn more about deaf culture because I think that's so important. I also really, really like that at the end of the book, they have pictures. 
giving you the alphabet in ASL. So I thought that was really, really cool. I just thought this was a really cute, sweet picture book. And if you're looking for a picture book with Duff culture in it for a little one in your life, I would recommend this one. Then I read One Star Romance and I gave this 4.25 stars. This was as close to being a four and a half as you can be without actually being a four and a half. So this follows Natalie and Rob. And Natalie is an aspiring writer and she meets Rob at her best friend Gabby's 25th birthday party where Gabby gets engaged to Rob's best friend. And we get to see them at various moments where they are interacting because of their friends throughout the years. One of the issues is though, when Natalie releases her first book, Rob gives it a one-star review on Goodreads and it creates a lot of tension between the two of them over the years. And we see kind of how that plays out, how they keep having to interact with each other different moments in their lives like what, what they're doing in those moments when they end up meeting up again and I just was really sucked into this I literally stayed up till like five in the morning one night reading it and I knew I had to put it down like I kept going to just one more chapter so it's really really hooked me I liked seeing Rob and Natalie and how they grew as individuals over the years and met up and how their relationship was different every single time they saw each other because they weren't the same people as they were the last time they saw each other and they really only saw each other once every couple of years at most and I just was very intrigued with the romance very intrigued with their paths and their journey again on the bland of spicy scale it is on the blander side which made me very very happy i got really sucked into this romance it wasn't one i planned to read but i'm really glad that my mom convinced me to pick it up because i ended up really enjoying it then i read last pen standing which is the first book in the stationary shop mystery series and i gave this 3.25 stars this follows delta who has moved to tundish to become the new co-owner of a stationary shop with her friend hazel they end up doing a workshop at a local hotel and it's during this workshop that a hotel guest is found dead in the bar and Delta's best friend becomes the main suspect so she ends up investigating. I thought this was a good start to a cozy mystery series. It's probably one I won't read unless it comes out of my TBR jar even though I own book three. I thought there was a lot going on in the first book because there was a lot of different characters and trying to get acquainted with them when Delta was also getting acquainted with them and then you had the idea of these were guests at the hotel so like the people she was kind of investigating weren't necessarily people who live in the town so that added an extra element of she couldn't just pump like locals for information because they didn't necessarily know these people super well either. I think, like I said, I think it's a good start. It wasn't my favorite cozy mystery but I think I think this series has potential. And I would be interested in seeing where it goes. It's just not going to be like a necessarily high priority for me. Though I may have actually added it to my TBR because there's only three books in the series. So you may actually see it sooner rather than later now that I say I may wait for it to come out of my TBR jar because I might as well read the second book so I can get the third book off my shelves because it doesn't feel like a series I'm going to want to collect. So we'll see. You'll have to stay tuned to future TBRs and vlogs to see if I actually pick up book two in a timely manner or if I end up putting it off. But like I said, I think this was a fine start to the series and I'd be willing to read at least the other two books that were out to see where it goes and if it grows in a way that I enjoy. Then I read The Portal and the Veil and I gave this 3.25 stars. This is the third book in the Keeper series and this follows various individuals who have these devices that have special abilities. So like in the first book, we meet Horus and we see him on his journey, not that he knows it at first, to gaining his device, which is a box that has special powers. And he soon learns that there are these entities that are villainous who are after those devices for not great reasons. So it, it's led to a lot of battles. And we see all sorts of different perspectives throughout this one of various individuals who are capable of using these devices because not everybody is. Because like for instance Horus's box is specifically tuned to Horus. Like he is the only person that could really wield it so not everybody is capable of using these devices. And this one was a bit confusing. There was a lot of things that were going on that I wasn't quite sure about which brought my rating down. I'm not as invested as I was after the first book because like I said a lot of things have changed and 
there are some characters I really really don't like and I don't understand their motives and that is bringing my rating down and my interest in the series down but there is only one book left so I definitely will continue it I thought this was also a bit long I feel like it could have been shorter and there were times when I felt like it lagged a little bit so we'll see how the fourth one goes but all in all it was a, it was a fine read I just I think there were some characters whose motivations I didn't quite understand and then there are so many POVs that I think I think it almost would have been better to just stick with a Horus who was our POV in the first one whereas now we've expanded to a bunch of people and I, I think that's not working as well for me in this particular series as it has in others. And then the last book I finished is Me and Mr. P and I gave this 3.75 stars. So this follows Arthur and he is struggling. His little brother Liam is definitely I, some type of neurodivergent if I had to guess based on the descriptors. Uh, he seems to be autistic and he is frustrated because it feels like he's kind of getting lost in the shuffle and that his parents care more about keeping Liam happy and making things run the way that Liam wants them to run than they do about Arthur. And on a particularly frustrating day, he decides to run away from home and ends up bumping into this polar bear, Mr. P. And he brings him back home and we see how Mr. P is there to help the family and maybe find a way to make things a little bit better for Arthur, Liam, and his parents. And I thought this was a really interesting look at a family with a neurodivergent kid. I would have preferred they actually explain what was going on with Liam so that the reader had a better understanding of what they were dealing with. But I also thought it was maybe fine given Arthur's age and that it was from Arthur's point of view that it wasn't directly stated. I thought it was interesting to see how Mr. P kind of brought the family together and helped Arthur deal with his feelings because he's definitely going through a lot trying to deal with his brother and the way they think is different. And I think it helped to have Mr. P there because it allowed him to maybe understand a little bit more of what was going on in Liam's head and helped him to relate to Liam in a way he hadn't been able to before. Because I know as somebody who's neurodivergent, it can sometimes be hard for me to relate to somebody who is neurotypical because their brains work differently. So it was interesting kind of seeing that in reverse and how Mr. P helped to bridge that gap. I just thought this was a really sweet, cute book that maybe, you know, will bring some interesting topics to light for kids and families and has some interesting illustrations. I thought it was nice. Um, it's a series I will likely continue because there are more books in there and I would love to see what other families Mr. P helps. And I think this is one I'm going to pass on to the little ones in my life because I think it could be something one of them could benefit from reading. So I believe those are all the books I finished. I did make progress in uh, The Vanquisher's Secret of the Reaping. I got to page 66 last night on Sprints. This is the sequel to The Vanquishers and we're back with Boog and her family and they're continuing on from the events that happened in the first book. And in the first book, if memory serves, one of Boog's friends goes missing and they live in a universe where vampires used to exist and she is trying to figure out whether vampires had anything to do with her friend's disappearance or if they're still vanquished like she believes they are even though her parents are part of the community that still takes it very, very seriously, even though a vampire hasn't been seen in a very long time. So the events that happened in the first book lead directly into this one. So I can't really tell you anything about this one other than that we're back with Boog and we're getting to see where things are going now. I really enjoyed the first 66 pages. I kind of flew through them. So I'm very excited to be continuing this into next week. And then the other update I have is that I started Death by Darjeeling. I actually made it to, I want to say, page 175. Yes. And I was on sprints talking about my feelings on this. I wasn't super invested in it. It wasn't really hooking me, which is weird because, I mean, look where I am in this compared to the end in A Cozy Mystery. And I made the decision to DNF it. So this follows Fedoja, who owns a tea shop, and 
she's working some kind of event when a man ends up dying after having drank some of her tea. So she kind of gets invested, especially when somebody who has worked for her and is friends with somebody who works for her kind of seems to be one of the suspects. And the reason, the thing that made me completely decide to DNF this, other than the fact that I really didn't care about the mystery or the characters I was reading about, is every once in a while, there would be like, say two paragraphs where we would get the POV of somebody else in the story and then it would go back to the doja and I didn't like that. We've had chapters that were from other people's POVs that are suspects, like the people she's thinking could possibly be involved. And I did not like being in their heads and they're creepy. And then I'm going to read you this, which is on page 170. So if you don't want to hear anything this far in the book, feel free to skip over me. But this line, well, these lines are what made me really go, yeah, I'm done. So we're in a character's head that is not Fidoja, and he is talking about Fidoja, And he says, she was like some wonderful, rare, tropical bird, but you couldn't just walk up and grab something like that. You had to charm it, woo it, make it feel safe. Only then could you hope to possess it. And I went, red flag, red flag, red flag. And I was talking on sprints and I was just like, it's not worth it. I don't care who did it. So like, why stick with it to find even the mystery out? So I have DNF this and I'm not going to be continuing on with the series, which means I can take like book 17 or something like that off of my physical TBR. So that's my week. It's been quite interesting. Um, a little bit of this, a little bit of that. I read a couple of romances. I read a couple of cozy mysteries. I read some fantasies. I read a children's picture book. It's It's been quite the week. Hopefully I will do better at checking in next week because it's the final book support group and I'm very, very excited to be reading all of the sequels. But I hope you understand that like I was focused on actually catching up on filming some videos and then you would not believe how long it took me to put away all of the books I hauled. Like seriously, it was nuts. So that also ate into my time of being on here filming because I really wanted to get that done and I'm feeling in a much better place now that I don't have books everywhere because I kept going, well, I'm going to film those other hauls so I'll just wait and put books away. And I was starting to get stacks of books that I had read and wanted to keep and put away and I couldn't do that because I hadn't filmed. So hopefully next week I will check in a little more frequently. But that's going to be all for this week's vlog. All of my social media is linked in the description below if you'd like to come chat with me. If you've made it this far in the video, leave me butterfly emojis. Like this video and subscribe to my channel and I'll talk to you next time. Bye!